Okay, now I've cut my trailer frame pieces. My, uh, th this is a side rail. This is the front of the trailer over here. Now, what I've done is I've taken and I've made this 45s. Uh, cut 45 degree angles on there. And this front piece, this has a 45 on both ends. So what that's going to do is make a nice corner. So now let's say you're going to use plywood or something on here. It would end up just laying, this is right side up, it would end up just laying right in there. And you've got a nice little toe kick or whatever so things don't fall off. So that, that, that's going to be the only 45s you need to do. Um, all the rest of the pieces are going to go underneath. And I'll show you here. And one thing I want to say is take your time and make, make all the pieces exactly, cut them right, cut them to length because it's really going to help when we square this up. And you'll see uh, squaring it up is important if you want this thing to trail right. So, all right, now I've added my back piece. That's going to be, that's the last cross member, obviously, and that's where the tailgate's going to fasten to. Um, I'll show close ups of some of this stuff here shortly, but I just wanted to show you how to square everything up. Like I already said, take your time, measure twice, three times, cut once. Yeah, the, the old adage is true. Um, then you're not wasting material and make it accurate as you can. Um, all my parts are right on the money. I mean, it's, this isn't a machine shop, but trust me, when it comes to squaring it up, now you can use a framing square if you want. I don't, something this big, you know, if you only have a square that reaches out this far, it's not as accurate. I always use the tape measure. So when you have equal length sides, which I do, and you have equal length front and back, as I do, uh, that's a rectangle, and without getting into a big math lesson, um, what we're after, is the same dimension when I pull the tape from corner to corner. So I'm going to hook this outside corner right here. Make sure you got it hooked nice because you're going to want to do the exact same thing when we go the other way. So basically I've got 114 and 7 16 inches. All right. So I'm going to want the same thing for this side. And that's going to tell me if it's square or not. So I've got it hooked. And I've got 114 and 5 eighths. So it's a little different. Now what I want to do, basically, is squeeze these two sides together. And we'll split the difference. So 5 eighths to 7 sixteenths, I mean, that's only 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to knock this. And I've got, I'm down to a half. I mean, I'm, I'm a little less than a half now. So now I want to double check this side. And I've got 114 and a little less than a half. It's perfect right now. So I don't want to mess it up. And I'm going to show you a trick on how I tack this stuff. And then you double check in between tacking. Um, but I'll, I'll show some close-ups here of what I've got going right now before I do any tacking. All right, guys. Here's a, here's a picture of the the corner where I 45'd it, and I've just got it obviously held in place with a vice grip. Now, what I've got going here is when I did see that right there, that gap. Now, when I did the 45, I did not cut this face. I only cut the long face at a 45. Now, what that leaves me is a really nice corner weld. Look at the size weld I'll be able to put in there. Now, that also adjusts the dimension just a hair, you know, the width of the iron, which is 3 16 So, I'm going to show you where that'll come in handy. So, technically, right now, this frame is measuring 60 and 3 eighths because I got 3 16 extra on each side. And it's not a big deal for our hanger brackets because, I mean, what, 
what's three sixteenths of an inch. Trust me, like I said, this is uh, it's not rocket science at all. So, all right, now where it comes in handy is back here. Now I've held this dimension from this point to the other side. I have 60 and 3 eighths. Remember 3 sixteenths on each side. So what I've got going here is you can see that I'm not perfectly, you know, I'm, I'm set in just a hair that way. But when I flip this over and I'm welding, I'll be able to put a very nice bead in here. I don't know, I'll try and get you right here. I'll be able to lay a real nice bead. Whereas if this was flush, you can still lay a bead, but you're not, it, it, I don't know. It's just the little extras. I like to do it. Um, if you have a problem with the dimensions changing, that 3 sixteenths per side, uh, you can always allow for it. You can always cut your pieces 3 sixteenths short. So, now what I'm going to want to do when I tack this up, and I'll show you after I do it, is I'm going to put a tack on the inside corner right here on all four corners. Right here. And I'm going to, well, let's see. I'll, I'll go on the outside. It looks like I got my clamps right in the way. So I'll go on the outside corner. And I'm going to want to put a tack on this outside corner. And I'm going to want to put a tack on that outside corner, that outside corner. That's all I'm going to do for right away. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to add any more cross members right now. What I want to do is I want to keep this square. We've got it square. So I'm going to be putting tacks on the outside corner. Oh, on all four corners. One here, one there, over here. And what that does is that'll still allow me to move this thing. I have it square already. we got it clamped. But I'm just showing you sometimes you know, when you're doing a really big object, whenever you put heat to something, it's going to move. It's just that simple. Now, something like this, it's not going to move very much. But I want to get all four corners tacked on the outside. That way I can still move this around. It's only after you put that second weld on the inside that will keep that from moving. Then that joint's not going to move anymore. You know, if I put a tack here and I had just two pieces, I could split that apart and I could, I, I could actually move that around, even with this tack not breaking. But once I tack it here, from here to here, that joint is solid. You'd end up having to break tacks to change anything. So that's my next step.